Hello everyone. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about a topic that encounters nowadays very commonly. Yes, I am talking about the PCOS, Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. So, some time people might have confusion between two terms. One is PCOD and the PCOS. So, if we are talking about the PCOD, then the problem is only confined to the ovaries. If we do ultrasound scan and uh, in that we can find out that there are many small follicles which are immature and they become degenerated and they look like cysts which are arranged in the periphery of the ovary. So, if we find this thing in the ultrasound scan, then we can confirm it that it is the case of PCOD. But in case of PCOS, there are many other features which arises in a woman. Okay, So, that we will discuss in later. So, this PCOS is usually arising uh, in a reproductive age of a woman that uh, the period which start with the menarche and it end with the menopause that uh, once the woman begin with her menstrual cycle and once she stop with this menstrual period this problem arises in between this duration okay so what is pcos so according to rotterdam criteria there are three features and if any of two features will found then we can call it as the case of pcos so what all three features are there first is if the woman is having an ovulation or oligo ovulation an ovulation means there is no ovulation absence of ovulation and oligo ovulation means there is a least ovulation because uh, the woman who is suffering with this pcos uh, will have many menstrual irregularities she might have uh, absence of menstrual cycle or she may have heavy bleeding because of oligomenorrhea in which her cycle is going to be delayed Usually we, we know that there is a cycle of 28 day but if it goes beyond 35 days then there, this is the case of oligomenorrhea where the number of menstrual period which are appearing in a year is going to be reduced. Yes that is the oligomenorrhea. So the first feature is anovulation or oligovulation. So either of in these condition uh, in which the menstrual irregularities are there in all this condition the ovulation is going to be reduced or there may be no ovulation and the second feature is if we found any clinical significance or biochemical significance of hyperandrogenism in which the androgen level is rising more and more in women so this could be the second feature that we will discuss later in detail and the third feature that is the appearance of polycystic ovaries in which many cysts are appearing in the ovary and that we can find out by the ultrasound scan. So, out of these three criteria, if we found any of the two uh, significant features, then we can call it as the case of PCOS. But out of all the three, the key important feature is the hyperandrogenism. So, this could be the important feature that should be present if the woman is having PCOS. Okay. So, why it is appearing in a woman? The exact cause is still not clear but it is seen by many studies that uh, if the mother and the grandmother have the genetic significance of this uh, PCOS then the first degree relative and the daughter and the sister might have this problem because there is a genetic predisposition. But sometimes it happens that uh, uh, if the mother and the grandmother have the same genetic makeup still they are not showing any feature of PCOS because of their uh, lifestyle behaviors. So uh, nowadays uh, what is happening this combined effect of genetic predisposition and the environmental factor and the lifestyle changes this all combines and contribute in the PCOS because uh, the, this sedentary lifestyle which is going on in this current scenario is one of the contributing factor in which the girls are not doing as much as physical exercises or the body movements they love to eat junk food fried food and the fast food and they just hate or avoid healthy homemade diet so this is the one of the common reason which we are seeing in the current studies that uh, combined effect of genetic predisposition and the environmental and lifestyle factors are contributing in this PCOS cases. 
so how it is going to be developed usually what happen in these women there is a insulin resistance and we know that what insulin does so uh, insulin is usually released from the pancreas and what it does it uh, take up the glucose okay uh, through the carbohydrate rich diet and it is to be utilized by the cell in form of energy so in this cases in pcos what happens the insulin is not doing its job well so in that response the pancreas are releasing more and more insulin so that the body can utilize the glucose so this may lead into the hyperinsulinemia in which the pancreas is releasing more and more insulin and once the insulin level is going to be rise more and more what happened the ovaries become sensitized to this hyperinsulinemia and liver is also sensitizes so in response to this hyperinsulinemia the ovarian thecal cells thecal cells which surround the follicle they releases more and more androgen okay and this normally also they are releasing androgen but they aromatize into estrogen but here what happens they do not aromatize into estrogen where whereas they remain uh, in this androgen form itself okay and in the liver also with this hyperinsulinemia what is happening uh, the increased level of this insulin decreases the sex hormone binding globulin uh, which is released from this liver so uh, that is very essential for binding of androgen but as the production of this sex hormone binding globulin decreases they will not adequately bind with this androgen and that all result in the high androgen that is the male uh, masculine hormone okay that is this androgen testosterone level is rising more and more in the blood of a woman okay so as the woman is having pcos what all symptoms she may have so as i told you that uh, with this uh, high androgen or the free testosterone level in the blood she may have uh, the male pattern of hair that she may have facial hair excess facial hair that is uh, which are aligned in the jaw line as well as on the chin and the upper lips so if she may have excess facial hair uh, that can be Uh, called as hirsutism okay so in this condition the woman is usually termed to be a hirsutism where the facial hair is excess and she may also have very oily skin she may develop acne also she may have various dark velvety appearance of skin and which could be found more in the nape of the neck and uh, that darker skin could be found in the uh, underneath the breast as well as in the armpit and the inner aspect of the thighs so this dark velvety skin is usually to be termed as acanthosis nigricans so with this high level of androgen in the blood and the insulin resistance may cause these symptoms in a woman and in majority of condition the woman become obese with this androgen high androgen level but uh, uh, we cannot say like that uh, if the woman is lean and thin then uh, she may not have uh, pcos because in lean and thin also the pcos could be appear so if we talk about the long term consequences of pcos then we can say that uh, as she is the case of insulin resistance so she may develop uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus she may have cerebrovascular disease and uh, she may have dyslipidemia and uh, she might have uh, obesity in later age and uh, if she is married then she may have a uh, problem in conceiving the baby that is infertility so this could be the long term consequences with this pcos so how we can find out that the woman is uh, the case of pcos so uh, to analyze this we can take the blood test and by the high level of serum uh, free testosterone level we can rule it out that uh, she is the case of hyperandrogenism because uh, this is rising more by these ovaries and uh, we can find out the fasting and the postprandial insulin and glucose level because she is the case of insulin resistance and uh, we cannot say that in every of the case in pcos there is the 
ultrasound scan in which the cysts are appearing but in some of the women we can find that uh, there may be a polycystic ovary so by this polycystic ovary we can rule it out by ultrasound scan that uh, we can find uh, necklace -like, like appearance of the follicle or these strings of pearl like appearance of the follicle so why it is appearing because we know that if we compare with the normal in normal cycle what happens only one follicle is maturing and then this become ovulated and then finally menstrual cycle will appear but in this cases what happened with this high androgen peak it creates a feedback to the pituitary gland and it decreases the release of fsh so that's why one follicle is not maturing to that state that it can ovulate so there are many follicles which are growing in the ovaries okay in the peripheral region so uh, if we are finding that there are more than 12 follicles are in immature state which are aligned in the periphery and whose diameters are uh, 2 to 9 mm in diameter so if we found this finding that more than 12 follicles are there uh, whose measurement are 2 to 9 mm in diameter and the ovarian volume is also increasing then we can uh, rule it out that the woman is having the case of polycystic uh, ovary but as I told you that in every PCOS case it is not compulsory that the woman may have this ultrasound scan of polycystic ovaries yes although its name is polycystic ovarian syndrome but as I mentioned in the uh, Rotterdam criteria that there are the three features and there could be any of the two features whether she may have menstrual irregularity uh, and uh, with that she may have hyperandrogenism. So uh, if she is, she is not having any uh, sign of polycystic ovary although she could be considered to be a case of PCOS. So by this we can find out whether she may have high testosterone level in the blood or she may have high insulin or high glucose level in the blood or she may have polycystic ovary. Now if we talk about the management part in PCOS then yes there are certain medication that uh, treat symptomatically like in this case there are many menstrual irregularities. So if we want to treat these irregularity then uh, there are certain drugs like OCPs oral contraceptive pills that regularizes the menstrual cycle and if you want to treat this insulin resistance then there is a metformin okay and if the woman is infertile then she could be treated by ovulation induction therapy because n ovulation is the one uh, common reason for infertility in PCOS women so we can prescribe uh, ovulation induction medication to treat uh, symptomatically but apart from all this medical treatment the only remedy is to do physical activities as, as much as she can because more she uh, feel stress free and more she do physical activities and uh, she take homemade healthier diet uh, she will be cured from this disease soon rather uh, only depends on this medication so yes medicine is there but it is not the cure and the cure is in your hand so the first line management that doctor advises to every woman is that do physical activity as much she can uh, the physical workout and use of healthier homemade diet and avoid from stress because this is the only cure uh, from which the woman could be treated very easily so in this lecture we have discussed in very conclusive manner that what is PCOS and how you can identify this condition and what all symptoms are there and how you can treat this condition. Thank you.